Good morning. Welcome to First Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Mark. It is good to have you here on this day, the third Sunday of the season of Lent. A few announcements, things going on. Um, as you look at the calendar for this week, today we do have confirmation class in the fellowship room in the lower level at 1 o'clock for all of our confirmants. And this Wednesday, of course, we have the next installment of our midweek services. Pastor Laura will be preaching this week. Um, it uh, is uh, Last week we didn't have quite as many here because the weather was not, not so good, so we're hoping that the good weather that we're having today and certainly tomorrow uh, will continue to be decent on Wednesday and we can have a good crowd and there's always good food, a luncheon afterwards, so please plan, plan to be here at 12 noon in the chapel for the service followed by that luncheon. Thursday morning, or Thursday evening, I should say, 6 o'clock, Worship and Music Committee meets um, in the fellowship room. And a note for next Sunday, do not forget that daylight saving time begins next weekend. So turn your clocks ahead, spring ahead one hour on Saturday night, so don't forget that. Um, some, a couple other um, bits of good news. Um, first is about um, uh, the coldest night of the year. Uh, we made, uh, brought in $615 for that, which is wonderful. I think I shared a little bit about that last week, but uh, to get you all caught up on that, $615 was raised um, for the YWCA for um, their programs here in the community. So that was wonderful. Thanks to all who supported that. And um, the ELCA Good Gifts Farms, we were able to purchase two farms, so it's wonderful. That is a wonderful effort, and I wanted to uh, thank all of you uh, for doing that. It was just wonderful, so that's really, really good news. I think those are my announcements for this, uh, for this day. Anything else that needs to be mentioned for the good of the order? It's good to have you here. Blessings to all. Please stand, then, for the order for confession and forgiveness found in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is the word of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the 20th chapter of Exodus, verses 1 through 17. God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall, now not, you shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God. I, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or your alien resident in your towns. For the six days of the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. 
Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or your male or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. We will sing Psalm 19 responsively. declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the outermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the The second reading is from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 18 through 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. 
The God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise. may be seated. Grace and peace to you in the name of Christ our Lord and our temple. Amen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of slavery you shall have no other gods before me. I am the Lord your God. It's the first commandment. Number one. Right off the bat, the Lord declares that he is in charge. He is Lord. You are not. God lays it out. Plain and simple in just six one-syllable words. To make sure the point is easily understood, I am the Lord, your God. Everything else falls into place after this fact. God wants our full attention, not a part-time, not a once in a while, occasional, when we feel like it kind of arrangement, God wants us always. God even expresses his firm conviction on the matter. I, the Lord God, am a jealous God. The Lord doesn't take it lightly when his people drift away and find other partners, in this case, other gods. This is a relational thing that God is talking about here. God is jealous because, well, quite frankly, he is our lover. Truly, it is. It's true. God is bound to us. Scripture declares that his people are the bride. God is the groom. 
If you find some other God, then you are a cheater. Or as sacred scripture so bluntly puts it, an adulterer. And that's what Jesus witnessed firsthand when he walked into the temple courtyard. He saw a crowd of people who cashed in their relationship with the God who set them free from slavery in Egypt, who made them his people, gave them a land of their own, guided, fed, and clothed them all their days, and they forgot it all. They left the Lord for the sake of easy cash, quite literally, a few bucks and a life of comfort. And they did it all right under the Lord's nose, smack in the middle of the temple court. Talk about gall. Jesus was stunned by the audacity. It was brazen idolatry, and no one from what he could see seemed to care. Now, my friends, this passage, this passage, passage, this is one of those passages from the Bible that is easy to be confused about. Simple explanations abound amid the confusion. I think the first time I ever heard someone explain it, they said, God doesn't like people buying and selling stuff in the church. Hmm. And over the years, that has often been cited as the reason why we shouldn't have raffles and lotteries. People always refer back to this, this story. And that we ought to keep bake sales to a minimum. And, you know, limit the cash flow, lest the Lord come down and accuse even sainted Lutherans of the egregious sin of laundering money in our hallowed worship places. Are you with me? Yeah. So that means for decades we've lived as poverty-stricken, grumpy, forlorn Lutherans, wondering where our next dollar will come from while just over the hill our Catholic neighbors have partied and played bingo and smiled all the way to the bank. <laughs> so what's going on here? What's going on with Jesus? What's gotten his dander up? It's the temple. It's the temple. The temple is the worship place for God's people. The temple is where the people gather. We assemble, we come together as a community and hear again and again that the one God is our Lord. Or that's the plan. That's the general idea for having this temple. God speaks to us, we listen, we give praise. And we're sent out from here into our daily lives. But somewhere along the way, the people that Jesus watched in the temple had forgotten this message. They were so wrapped up in their daily lives that they turned the very house of God into a shopping plaza, quite literally. And when this happened, they not only broke the first commandment, they obliterated it. God said that he alone is Lord. The people, though, by their actions, begged to differ. And Jesus was disgusted beyond words, so he started throwing furniture all over the place. He could no longer contain his anger. Jesus was jealous. Now, I want you to think back for a minute. Think back for a minute about another Bible story. Remember the story of Jesus turning water into wine? Remember that story? Yeah, that story happened also in the Gospel of John, which we're reading from this morning. And it also happened in chapter 2, which is our chapter for today's Gospel. 
But the wedding at Cana in Galilee happened verses 1 through 11. In other words, that story, the story of water turned into wine, happened right before the story we're hearing this morning. Jesus turned the water into wine because he wanted the wedding reception to keep on going. Don't stop the celebration. Rejoice with the couple who pledged their faithfulness to each other. Chapter 2 of John, verse 1 through 11. Now we have today's story as an example of people who fail to be true. They have broken the relationship they pledged to keep. Are you with me? Yeah. That means then, for the writer of John's gospel, the big issue in the gospel is not whether we should have bake sales and bingo in the church. It's about being faithful to God. The people were breaking the first commandment by also breaking the sixth commandment. You know what that is? You shall not commit adultery. They had, in other words, fallen in love with something other than the Lord God who created them and gave them every blessing imaginable. They had traded the wisdom of God for the foolishness of the world. They cheated on God. Everything else, something else, had become their Lord. So, those people in the marketplace who thought they were wise and shrewd business people were really fools for turning their backs on God. And the real irony in the whole thing, I don't know if you catch this, the real irony in the story is that the people were buying and selling animals that they would use in the sacrifice of the temple. Doing all of that without giving thought to the fact that what God really wants for his people is to love him by showing that love in loving their neighbor. <laughs> That's what the temple, this place, is all about. It is what the church is about. Love of God and love of neighbor. That is the sum of all the commandments. That is what it means to be faithful all the time. By turning our attention away from the love for God and neighbor, Jesus says, we're tearing the temple down. Tearing down God's temple is what we do best. It happens whenever we turn our focus away from the Lord and think first about ourselves. Jesus is the living temple. He said it. He's the holy house of God who gave his life for the world, suffering for foolish and unfaithful people. On a cross, on a cross, we hung him up. And by so doing, we tore down the temple. And we still do it every day. Every commandment that is broken, in every sin, and when we worry about things more than we worry about people, the temple of Jesus is torn down. Oh, we have such a jealous God. He declares, I, I am the Lord your God. You know, those words, those six words, that is God's wedding vow to us. And it is a vow our Lord repeats every single Sunday, every week, right here in this temple, this holy house. God is pledging his faithfulness in a glorious, glorious reception with bread and all the wine that is needed to celebrate the love of Christ, our living temple, who thank God, remains forever. Amen.
Oh, church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. You alone are God. We thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. Awaken the church to the mystery of your grace and give us glad hearts as we receive the good news of your deliverance. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You judge the nations. We pray for an end to war and strife in every land. Raise up peacemakers and provide humanitarian aid to people fleeing from conflict. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You bring healing and hope. We give thanks for doctors, nurses, researchers, and health workers who prevent and treat illness. We pray for any who are sick, especially Kathy, Donna, Sharon, Joe, Sandy, Chris, Carolyn, Johnny, Pastor Richard, Pastor Phil, Pastor Jerry, Wendy, Sally, Harold, Carol Jean, Keith, Doris, Steve, Barb, Karen, Landon and his family, and everyone who has asked for our prayers or who is known only to the Lord. Carrie, Douglas. Shine your grace on all in need of your mercy. Hear us, O God, your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. You abide with your people. Send your care to those undergoing life transitions, marriage, divorce, childbirth, adoption, moving, graduation, employment change, or a death in the family. Hear us, O God, your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. You bring life from death. We remember our loved ones who have died, confident that they have new life in you. May we trust that nothing can separate us from your love. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. O God, walk with us on our journey of faith and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of our Lord's peace. God's peace. Brenda, God's peace. God's peace.
Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, Together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and Glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here is bread for the journey, a feast 
for hungry hearts, come.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share God's blessings. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.